Hey, welcome back. We've just returned from the 2022 Isle of Man TT race. What an experience that was. If you have the opportunity, get yourself over there. And if you're planning to get there in 2023 or sometime in the future, here's a few things we got caught out on that I just want you to know about. Firstly, how do you get there? Do you take a package tour or do you book it yourself? What about accommodation options? There's camping, there's glamping, there's homestay, hotels. What about communications and data? Hey, don't worry, you've got Telstra Global Roaming, right? You'll be covered. Don't make that mistake. Transport around the island. 40,000 additional people are gonna be trying to do exactly the same thing you are at the same time. Race coverage. How do you listen in so you know what's going on? If I'm going to be in a paddock for five hours, do they provide chairs? If you're vegetarian or vegan, you really need to watch this video. Uh, I like to plan my own trip. What about some touristy things to do on the island? They close the roads for most of each race day. Where are you going to be standing? Are you ready? Let's get started. I was looking for a package tour and after some Googling, I found TTS tours of Armadale, New South Wales. I did a few review checks online and they seem to really have what we were looking for. The trip included all of the airfares, transport within London and accommodation in London for the first night before we went to the Isle of Man. So we had a day up our sleeve, so during that time we did a bit of sightseeing. We went out on an open top bus and we also went on a Thames River cruise. The next day we were ready to get to the Isle of Man. Our tour group are all staying in the glamping option so the bus took us to the campground and then we made our own way to Baldrine where we had arranged a homestay for the duration of the TT. We are glad we took this option because feedback we got from the rest of the group said that the campground was perfectly comfortable but it lacked electricity, Wi-Fi and the ability to charge your phone and your cameras and those sorts of things. There are lots of hotels at the Isle of Man and they're all available online and you can check Airbnb and Homestay if you want to be independent of the camping. Now don't get caught out with telecommunications as I did. I assumed, because I had Telstra Global Roaming, and Global Roaming is active in London, being the United Kingdom, then when I got to the Isle of Man, of course, I'd have Global Roaming there. The Telstra app will tell you that the United Kingdom is included in Global Roaming. However, when you get to the Isle of Man, it says the United Kingdom is not included. I didn't buy a SIM card when I first arrived, and it wasn't until several days later that I got a $300 text message from Telstra telling me of my problem. So get yourself a SIM card as soon as you land. Getting around the Isle of Man is not difficult once you learn the public transport system and get your head around their rather complicated timetabling. Now get yourself a Go Explore card because this handy little card gets you on all of the Isle of Man public transport. Uh, the buses, the electric tram, Even the historic steam train can take you out to Port Erin. Just be aware though that at the end of every race there's going to be thousands of people all trying to get home. You may have quite a long wait for a bus. Taxis of course are readily available and you can always find a chatty taxi driver to entertain you along the way. Okay. Yeah. You name it, name it. Stones. Yeah. What what brought them to Isle of Man? Well, just to play the Lido. Yeah, oh, it was the Lido. Was the, yeah, yeah. It just became that uh, yeah. famous. Most of the grandstand areas have public address systems, so they keep you up to date with what's happening with the races. Yeah. 
driver, Cesar Chanel, who died. Passenger Olivier is in a critical condition in a hospital. One of the other options you've got are the traditional Isle of Man TT Race earpiece radios. Also these days you can use apps like TuneIn Radio on your smartphone and listen into Manx Radio. How this works in case you want to know how a superbike race works. You'll also find people where you're sitting who've got a speaker and they often have it loud enough so everyone can hear their race updates. 14 seconds off Hickman earlier on. Davy Todd will be coming through there shortly as well. Grandstand setting, as you would expect, is comfortable and gives you an exceptional view of everything that's going on. When you get out to some of the remote locations, however, such as the bungalow, really the only seating there is to sit on the grass. You might want to take a mat or get yourself a camp chair and take that along with you. At Craigna Bay, they do have a small grandstand as well as an open air bus where you can sit for a fee. Some of the other locations have rudimentary grandstand style seating. We decided we would actually carry tripod folding chairs all the way from Australia and we're glad we did because they just gave us a little bit of comfort when you're sitting for long hours in the grass. There are many restaurants on the Isle of Man but you can imagine how busy they get during race week. When you're out at a race, however, if you're at the grandstand, for instance, there are typical fast food outlets, such as hot dogs, wraps, burgers, those sorts of things. When you go to some of the more remote places, like Gregna Bar, then the food options tend to be very much fast food, English breakfast style, with bread, wraps, sausages, bacon, hash browns, those sorts of things. I only mention this because some of the members of our group were vegetarian and they said it was particularly difficult finding food for them. If you've never been to the Isle of Man before, then there are plenty of tourist activities to participate in. On Mad Sunday, we went out to Peel. We took the bus out there and there was a very large custom motorcycle show on display down by the waterfront. We had a good look round the town and also went out to Peel Castle. Now this is something you really want to have a look at. This is a thousand year old Viking castle. There are also displays of the Viking history around the town. You might decide to head out to Castletown. That's definitely worth a visit. We took the bus all the way out to Port Erin. We had lunch there and then had a look around the town before making our way back to Douglas on the steam train. Don't overlook Douglas as well. Have a good look around the promenade and out to the ocean and see the Tower of Refuge and learn about that history. It's worth also taking a walk to St Ninian's Church in Douglas have a look at the unique stained glass windows. When you've finished having a look around, I recommend popping into Bushy's TT Bar on the promenade. Have a beer. You've got to be aware that before the race starts, the roads will be closed, sometimes for an hour or more before the race gets underway. Once the race starts, you're locked in position unless you've had a look beforehand to figure out how to make an exit if you wanted to leave early. At Union Mills, you pretty well are stuck at the Railway Hotel until the race is over. At Ramsey, at Parliament Square, if you're on the inside of the town, then you can certainly leave via electric tram during the race if you wanted to. 
but if you're over at the Swan or the Central Hotel, you're stuck on that side of the road until the end of the race. Oh. At Craig Nabar, you do have the option of getting a taxi back to Laxey, but that's the only option until the races are over. Oh.